I'm going to show you now how to make the pull apart pizza sun from our new creating something incredible cookbook. It is also on cookie do. So we will just get started Put the book away because I'm going to use guided cooking. So just press start and I will um, worry about that. So the first step is to put in the water. The scales come up and I'm just going to pour it in. The scales go in one gram increments. So it's very accurate. Just need to go a little bit slow as you get to the end. Make sure you don't go too much over. Oh, perfect, it's great. Okay, so I've just got some water in. This is a really basic dough first to start with. So it's asking for a teaspoon of sugar. The sugar is always optional, but it does help um, activate the yeast. Um, I do find that doughs in a Thermomix work without the sugar as well, because we're, we heat the yeast and the water up to 37 degrees. So it's not super um, necessary, but it just helps and it's in this recipe. So I've just added the two teaspoons of yeast as well while I was talking about that. It's telling me to put the lid on and turning the speed selector up to one. And this is going to heat for two minutes at 37 degrees just to activate that yeast, which is what I was just talking about. So we will come back in two minutes. It has now just stopped that two minute process. I will press next and continue on with the recipe. It's asking me to add 400 grams of baker's flour. I often get questions about baker's flour and can you use plain flour? You can and your recipe will work out fine. But baker's flour has more protein, um, more gluten, so it gives a better rise for breads um, and pizzas. So it is a better flour to use in your doughs. But if you've only got plain flour and you want to make a dough, just do it anyway, and it will still it'll still be fine. Um, but yes, for any of you avid bakers out there, I didn't say that because, as you all know, baker's flour is much better. So I'm just adding in 30 grams of extra virgin olive oil. And that's enough, that's perfect. A teaspoon of salt. And I just use um, Himalayan rock salt that I have milled myself in the Thermomix. It only takes 10 seconds to powder your rock salt. So no additives in my cooking salt, which is um, why I do that. Okay, pop the lid on. And now it's going to knead for two minutes. And I've got the countdown timer on that. I will just show you the, the hole to, so you can see what's happening in there. Hopefully, maybe. All those ingredients are just coming together. Um, they're coming together and they will be kneading for two minutes. And then I'll show you the result. Okay, it's almost been the end of the two minutes and I just wanted to show you again what the dough is looking like now as it needs. Oh, it just stopped as I said that. Well, I'm about to show you the dough anyway. That's hilarious. Okay, so that's what the dough looks like. <laughs> if you tip your bowl upside down and twist the bottom of the blade, you can see what I mean there, the, the bottom of the blade piece, the dough just comes out and this is the magic I wanted to show you all of how great and strong um, and just the texture of this dough. It's just perfect. So that two minutes of kneading in your Thermomix to just save you, you know, anywhere. Some people um, need their dough for 20 minutes, um, even up to two hours of hand punching. So, but this is just a really good dough consistency for that. So I am going to wrap that in my thermo mat because this is a silicon um, mat that will keep in the heat of that dough. I'm going to let that rise um, until it's doubled or it, it's roughly about an hour and um, putting it in a warm place helps as well. So yep, and we will come back when that is done. Okay, it is time now to show you how to make the filling for our pizza. And the first thing it's asking us to do is to grate our cheese. So I've got 300 grams of mozzarella cheese here that I've pre-diced. Anytime you're grating cheese or um, anything that is hard in the Thermomix, it is good to cube it first, just so that it's not putting less pressure on your blades over time. So that goes in. And we're also adding in Parmesan cheese that I have also cubed. Lid goes on and this takes 10 seconds. 
this is the type of thing if you were in person you would definitely hear this because it's very powerful So we are going to scrape, sorry, banging the computer. It's, it's telling me to scrape down. I just want to show you the result there of how beautifully grated this cheese is. So good, no additives, no, you know, coating on the outside, which makes it a really nice grated cheese. So, and is cheaper than buying pre-grated cheese. So anytime you can buy it in blocks and um, grate it yourself. It's a really be much better result. Um, adding in now some sun-dried tomatoes. And some ham, you could put anything in. If you want to make it vegetarian, you could use um, artichokes, mushroom, or just like, it's a pizza. So it's whatever you want to put in your um, pizza. Um, pepperoni would be good if you don't want to use um, ham. Um, I'm, now it's asking for tomato paste. And I just wanted to show you, I've made this tomato paste in the Thermomix. There's a recipe on cookie dough just called tomato paste. So you can make your own um, if you want to be all additive free or if you just want it to, I don't know, just to be homemade for whatever reason, you can make your own pantry staples. So adding in an egg in nicely. And oh yeah, the oregano. Um, and again, whatever herbs you want to use if you don't, to use oregano, that's fine. I love it, oregano is a really good choice um, for pizza, so I think that's great. A little bit of sugar, this is for the filling. So, um, yeah, that goes in. And now it's just asking for a bit of salt to taste. So I'll just do a few grinds of that. And whenever I'm putting in salt in pizza, I also put a bit of pepper, because I like that. That's not in the recipe, that's just me. Um, Oh yeah, a bit of oil. So this is interesting. It's asked us to reserve some of the oil from the sun-dried tomatoes. So um, that's going into just, you know, a nicely flavored oil, I guess. Let's see if I've got enough. I didn't pre-weigh that. Oh, yeah. Very good. Okay. Now, sometimes in the guided recipes, a little video comes up explaining what it's telling you to do. This says insert spatula and mix while the Thermomix is running and it's just showing you how to do that. And because of the um, because of the collar, I think they call it, on the spatula, your spatula will never reach the blade. So that's safe to do just with your Thermomix spatula. So I've got that in. So Basically, it's just wanting me to have it sticking out the top while we do this next step, which is to mix all these ingredients together for 10 seconds on speed seven. Not so good. So, just finding a bowl I can put this in. I'm using the bowl from the sun dried tomatoes. That's okay. Okay, it's telling me to set that aside. Well, actually, I know from ahead in the recipe I need to put a third in here and two thirds in there. So, I will do that now. And I'm just going to be to roughly eyeball that. Um, so, that's what we have. The filling kind of looks like a rough chunky dip, I guess, that kind of texture. Um, looks good. And it looks like it will be easy to work with. Um, did I mention I've never made this recipe before? I actually wanted for this class tonight, I wanted to show you how easy it is to make this, um, even if you've never practiced it before or never don't know what you're doing. I am really not a chef. I am not an expert in the kitchen. That's why I love the Femo mix. Um, but these are the types of recipes that I know if I've seen someone else do, I'm much more confident doing it myself. Um, and that's why I thought I would show this recipe for you guys as well. So I've got two bowls of my filling. I reckon it's about a third. I could probably put a bit more over here. And that one I wanna pack in. 
that is going to be the, the sun, the center of the sun. And this one we will work with as well. Okay, getting out of the way, because now we're going to work with our dough. So I need to make some space in my kitchen. I'm not going to, oh, do need to put the oven on. I'm not going to step you through on the screens, but if you're at home doing this yourself, do, you know, do, do it step by step. It really um, guides you through telling you everything you need to do um, along the way. But I have, I think I know what I'm doing. So I just need to move you all back a bit. Okay, so I've got my dough here. It's been rising very nicely. Very, very nicely. And I am going to, oh, quickly rinse out my spatula. It actually wouldn't matter if you got a bit of the filling on this dough because that's what we're about to fill it with anyway. But what I want to do is cut my dough in about half, roughly, you know, it's not, not a big deal, but, um, and roll it out. We want 30 centimeter rounds. So your silicon bread mat is really good for that because it has the measurements on it. So I am just going to Roll that out. I am not Italian. I am not a pro at rolling dough, but this dough is quite good to work with. Um, I also know it wouldn't matter if I was if it was a rough circle. <laughs> My family won't mind. Um, so just just do our best here, really. I actually often do rectangle pizzas because they fit better in my oven. I have, we're a family of six. So when I make pizza, I do a lot. And the, the trays just fit better in my oven if I do it on rectangle trays. So I'm not really used to um, doing it round. But I reckon the silk, the, the bread mat has helped me do a pretty good job of that. Okay, so I've got around rough, roughly round. Um, I'm going to set that one aside and roll out another one. Um, and you don't need to watch me do it. Okay, I've rolled out both of my pizza doughs now. I've got one over there. I'm going to get that center of the sun there and put it as much in the middle as I think. Hopefully you can all see what I've done there. And just kind of see if it'll come out. Oh, how lovely. That's the center of our sun. It looks very tall. Um, and so now we're going to put the rest of this around the edges, like you can see in the picture on my screen, if you can see that. Um, we'll see how I go. And then, um, then I'll put the other dough over the top. So this recipe was included in this book. Um, each recipe in this book has had a little story for Grace, who is the founder of Thermomix in Australia, uh, the one who brought it here. Um, and she tells the story about in the morning when her grandchildren come in to say good morning. They say, good morning, grandma. They say it in Polish. I don't know what they, I don't know. Um, she, she, well, she's told the story in Polish. Good morning, grandma, the sun is awake. And um, it's, they talk about the sun and then, you know, whenever life's rough, it's like, it's okay, the sun will come out again tomorrow. And, um, you know, it just has some meaning to her. And I love that. And, you know, I think that's not just a story for Grace. I think that's a story for all of us. We all like to look to the sun and be bright and happy and get through hard times by knowing that the sun will come out again tomorrow. Um, so I liked that story, not just for her, but for, for me as well. And my, you know, my kids come in and wake me up in the morning and they open the blinds for me and we look at the trees and yeah, the sun, the, the birds are up, tweeting, the sun's up. Okay, this is looking a little rough, um, but you know, okay, I'm gonna steal some from over here and put it over here though. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, it looks pretty good. I am just going to make it a bit taller to sort of match what I think the picture there is but I'm quite happy with it. Rogue piece of ham. Okay, I'll show you what I have made here. Just quickly rinse my hair. Um, can you see? 
better if I do that. Okay, so you can see what I've created. And then, so yeah, I will show you this next tip of what they have, of what the recipe says to do, which I think is a pretty cool tip, is to get this round, um, see if it'll work for me, over the, over your um, rolling pin. And then place it over your, um, it's sticking a bit. I gotta be honest about that. So I'm not very happy about that actually. Oh, it's stuck entirely. So that's something for you to know, which is good for you to see here live. I'm gonna re-roll that out. I thought it was a really good tip. I think I could have flowered my rolling pin. Um, doesn't matter. I need to move this way. Um, so it's um, that's another part of learning and um, it's good you got to see my mistake but um, when I watched someone else do this it just came off really nice that she may have flowered it or her dough may not have been as sticky or maybe she wrapped it around the rolling dough a bit looser okay rolling out my circle again This will hopefully work a bit better this time. <laughs> and then we can do take two. Okay, let's see how I go this time. I also feel like I need to make the top one a bit um, wider, even though the recipe doesn't say to do that, but we'll see how we go. I'm just gonna really loosely Wrap that. Yeah, see, I've, I've done half this time and I've kept my hand in there so that doesn't happen again. So this time I should be able to just unroll it and put it over the top. That was much better. So now I need to make kind of get it all over. And we are going to seal the edges with a fork. But that's pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna get our bowl back from the dough. Where do I put that? There. <laughs> okay, I'm and I'm trying to hurry because I don't want you to just be bored watching me play with dough. I want you guys to try this though. I'm having fun. Okay, so what we need to do is use our bowl, that same bowl we used for the center. And we're going to, it said gently, but firmly put it down because we want to, um, and I'm just kind of using my fingers around as well. We want to, really section off the center of that sun. I can, I can, um, I feel like there's an air pocket in there. That's done a pretty good job actually. It looks quite good. Okay. And then it says to use a fork. To, I'm really just making sure because I feel like there's air in there. Anyway, I'm sure it's fine. Use your fork to really seal the edges because that is going to be important. And then we're going to make the rays come out of the sun. And if your dough is sticky, you can flour your fork um, or oil it either way. I think this is fine. If it's not too sticky, I think it's working quite well. Okay, so we're going to cut right up to the center of the sun. I'm going to make 16 little sun pieces. So we'll see how we go here. 
And I'm working on the Thermomix chopping board here, which is nice and big and um, really great to work on. So I've made four quarters and then just three more cuts in each quarter will get me my sun ray. And you could use a dough cutter. I don't, there is a dough cutter available on um, the mix shop, which I don't have, which I've seen work really well. But a sharp knife is fine. Just don't ever use um, a sharp knife on the bread mat. So I'm not working on the bread mat now. I'm just working on the baking paper um, and my board, which is so handy. And then we, the last step, oh, it's not the last step. There is one more step is to twist them all around. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Just pick that up, 90 degrees twist. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Let's see what I've done. <laughs> um, just to have them up right. And it looks so pretty. And, you know, you could get the kids involved in doing this and imagine the different types of fillings you could use. I'm also picturing a sweet version if you wanted to use, I don't know, a cinnamon kind of recipe or stewed apples or something like that. Ah, it looks so good. Then we're just brushing with um, an, a beaten egg. That's it. And this only bakes for 15 minutes, so it's quite quick. Um, and yeah, so give it a go. And um, there's lots of other really great recipes in the book to try. Um, some of the recipes are in a collection in Cookie Do at the moment, but um, others of them will be on Cookie Do later in the year. But in the meantime, you can purchase the book itself, which is a beautiful book and it has great stories in it um, and lots of really like, even doing this, it's better. Um, the book has some really good step-by-step -step pictures on how to do it. So um, yeah, it's a great book to have in your house on your, with all your other recipe books. And I think the kids will like this one. So my only next challenge is to get this onto my tray and I'm using the rose gold pizza tray from Thermo Mix. Um, I think I can just slide it on here from my shopping board. Um, and I am not great at these things in the kitchen, but I just think, I've got to tell you, I think I've done a pretty good job. So that's going in the oven for 15 minutes. Okay, I have here the final product of the pizza sun. Hopefully you can see that. Hold it up. Oh, it's so pretty. So the last thing to do, you can sprinkle it with some basil leaves to make it look pretty. Um, but I will just show you what it looks like when we open up. Hopefully you can see. I mean, it is really just so pretty. Um, so if I just grab a piece, and it should just pull apart <gasps> so nicely. It does. Oh, melty, gooey cheese. So that's the inside. You can see it's beautiful. It smells delicious of our pizza sun. So give it a go. And I'd love to know what you think of it. Thanks, guys.